The story of the Devil's Cartel is about Alpha and Bravo being dropped into um, Mexico, and it's in the middle of sort of the drug wars with the cartels, and they're on this mission which kind of goes sideways on them. They have to dig themselves out of this hole they've found themselves in. Before you know it, everything's going to go to hell, and you're going, you're going to be moving all over the place. Can I say hell? Oh, okay, yeah. all right, fantastic. Right. To heck! So it'll be all in Mexico, but it'll be all over the place. And the time span is also um, just after the Day of the Dead celebrations, and there's a lot of stuff we're building around the fictional cartel that we've got in the game in terms of their symbols and what they're doing to, to their environment. Well, these are very well-armed, um, obviously well-trained cartel forces that you're fighting, and they've got this, you know, in some cases, some of the same equipment and some of the same weapon, weaponry that you would expect to see in a much more militarized group. So for Devil's Cartel, we're taking a much more mature tone. The cartel wars, the stuff that's going on in Mexico right now is very topical, and we want to make sure we're respectful to that material. And it's also a great opportunity to shift the tone of the series a bit so the characters will take it seriously, and um, you know, we hope the player will as well. It's uh, much more straightforward to start with uh, characters that are in the universe but aren't the ones that you had before. Also to approach the story with confidence. Let the story on its own and let the narrative and the way you experience it in the gameplay be engaging and fun and, and, and feel appropriate to your tastes. You know, as an adult, you know, the, a mass gamer you want to experience on your couch. It's much easier to do that when you start with, with new characters that are in the universe than try to completely reboot the experience of a player who did enjoy the first two games and, the, and those uh, characteristics of Salem and Rios who are in the game um, and so you still get to experience them but you'll now play through these two new characters. Alpha and Bravo are the protagonists of Devil's Cartel. Alpha is a more militaristic type of character. Bravo is a little more off the book. He doesn't deal with authority as well. Still a very capable soldier but if he gets an order that he doesn't agree with and he thinks his way is better he's going to do that and take it on. For the names of Alpha and Bravo, I think there's a certain amount of we want the characters to take on that role and there's a certain amount of, you know, with a code name and just sticking with a code name, it lets the player project themselves into that character a little bit more. You know, they're a little greener than Salem and Rios. They're, um, they're coming into this new, they're newer to TWO and I think we're going to see sort of their arc from joining TWO to becoming more comfortable with the PMC and becoming very, very capable. TWO, or uh, Tactical Worldwide Operations as we're calling them now, they're a more polished, more elite private military corporation. So they take bigger contracts, they take more high profile contracts, and they really have positioned themselves as a group that's there to help. You will see other groups of two um, because that's how it's organized and uh, you'll fight alongside in some cases. With the Devil's Cartel, with Alpha and Bravo being new protagonists, We've got an opportunity to sort of reboot the series a bit, but we also want, you know, Salem and Rios as a, a touchstone for the fans who've enjoyed them in the past and are interested in their story as well. So it's not just Alpha and Bravo, you're also finding out what happened to Salem and Rios and what their arc is over the course of this game. You won't really have to have any prior knowledge of the game. It helps, um, and it's nice to know who Salem and Rios are and have played those previous games but we're not directly referencing anything that occurred in those games. We basically took a choice of, 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 of telling a story uh, that we felt was the best story without necessarily having the player um, being able to have an impact on that story. But, but, but the actual story though um, will be very immersive and, and really engaging and, and you'll get to experience like a lot of, of variety in terms of gameplay. So you won't always be uh, on foot uh, shooting people and taking cover. Uh, you'll actually be in high speed chase. You'll have like uh, crazy moments that are really action packed. Uh, you'll have a lot of variety and all that uh, ties in with the story. We're telling the story and we really want to guide the player through that story. Um, and have a, a solid beginning and middle and end. You can't really change the outcome of the story, but you're caught up in it. We're gonna engage the player and make sure that they wanna see what's gonna happen next. You play some games and it's like all the exposition was cut out and you're just getting the big moments. We wanna make sure that you're getting context for those big moments and you wanna see what happens next. And that's, you know, that's building strong characters, that's having a solid plot, that's making sure that the player always understands where they were and where they're going and why they're doing it. And I think that's a, it's a very important thing that for a shooter or any game that where you really want to engage the audience and pull them through the experience.